So I'm uh, an emeritus professor of history at the University of Melbourne and had a long career uh, in, the, in the history department there. I'm someone who uh, has always, ever since I was a child, been uh, passionate about history. And I'm very fortunate that I've had a career that's enabled me to express that love through teaching and research. My area of expertise is the history of modern France, particularly the French Revolution uh, and the 19th century. Um, but I'm also someone who was the former provost uh, and Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of Melbourne. So I had a lo uh, quite a long career in uh, senior management, working with uh, deans from right across the university. I've been a great supporter of the, the, the vision behind Humanities 21 since the outset. Uh, I knew some of the, the people who inspired it and I've always agreed strongly with what it is that they're, they, they're trying to do. Uh, I, I completely agree with them about the importance of, uh, of the humanities in all sorts of ways. I mean, firstly, the importance of the, the range of skills that our students learn in their humanities and the value that they represent um, inside the, the, the job market, but, but more broadly. But also, uh, I'm passionate about the role that the humanities play in our society generally. I mean, in terms of everything from history and philosophy to literature and, and the creative arts, it seems to me that the humanities are crucial to the, uh, what you might call the texture of our public life, the texture of our civil life, our interactions, what it is that makes it a, a good society to be, to be part of. Oh, indeed, they're, they're rather different lectures. I mean, one of them is about um, the French Revolution as an example of the, the mismanagement of change. Ever since um, the time of the French Revolution of 1789, which uh, everybody agreed was one of the really transformative, tumultuous events uh, of modern history with all sorts of repercussions, people have debated, so why did this happen? Um, we're also very interested looking back to see whether there are things that we can learn about leadership uh, from looking back at the past. Obviously, uh, history doesn't repeat itself exactly, but we can still learn a good deal about the world in which we live by looking back uh, at the past. The other lecture that I'm pleased to, uh, to offer is very different. Uh, and it's about a much later period of, uh, of French history towards the end of the 19th century. And it's around uh, the way we might make sense of that most beautiful and enticing of artistic moments, uh, the age of Impressionism. It seems to me that when people um, travel to, to France or think about France as, uh, as a centre of culture and tourism, that there are two key aspects that they often think about. One is about the history of art and particularly Impressionism, which must be uh, one of the most popular, uh, attractive periods of in the history of art. And the second is about Paris as a city, uh, the city of light. And what I do in that, uh, in that lecture is draw out the connections between uh, the history of art, where the Impressionist movement came from, and the history of Paris as a city because the, uh, there is a, a close, an interwoven relationship between the history of Paris as a city, urban planning, uh, French politics, and Impressionism as an artistic movement. Oh, I think the most important thing that I would uh, hope that people would, would draw uh, from both lectures is uh, how fascinating history is. <laughs> I think that the that certainly the lectures would would have that uh, would have that in common, but um, I'm hoping that in their different ways these are lectures which will underscore the importance of uh, historical literacy, of having an historical understanding, and how much more interesting uh, our our knowledge of societies uh, is when we do have that uh, historical background.